Hello Internet, Tech Guy here with yet another video. I'm back doing videos again for 2015 and my first video is a top 5 reasons to upgrade to Windows 10 and this is from late January 2015 about a day after when the press conference that Microsoft actually held was about all of these extra features that they were going to put into Windows 10 so let's get into it. Just before I go into it I want to go over a quick disclaimer I currently own a Retina MacBook Pro 15 inch from late 2013. I currently use Windows 7 mostly in Parallels Desktop 9 even though I don't use Windows anywhere near as often as I used to since setting this whole setup with Parallels Desktop and all that. But I've also got Windows 8.1 in it which yes I did not like Windows 8.1 for I guess you could say the general reasons like what everyone else is saying on the internet. There may be some details in this list that may be slightly inaccurate due to the poor live streaming of which I watched the playback from the CNET live coverage. They do a whole Twitter thing and all that as well at the same time but they like did the live press feed and that and they had bad coverage during the event itself so they were like going between the them and the studio and back to the live coverage and all that because it was dropping out worse than that and just everyone's going to say well apple had a really bad stream well i would almost say microsoft had a worse one <laughs> this video is based on what i am personally looking forward to for what i would use and what the vast majority of users would like to use from this new operating system. So let's get into it. At number five, we have the integration with the Xbox One. One of the biggest announcements, especially for gamers, is that they have got a whole gaming component to Windows 10 itself. And one of the biggest components of it is the ability to stream an Xbox One game on the same Wi-Fi network to a Windows 10 device. So I assume that's including PCs, tablets, two-in-ones, all-in-ones, every toaster and refrigerator. And basically, you just got to be on the same Wi-Fi network, but that should be the only real restriction that there is, as long as you have an Xbox One and a Windows 10 compatible device. Also, DirectX 12 was unveiled, which has more complex scenes with stable frame rates and stuff like that. Windows 10 also allows players to play with or against people who have an Xbox One. So if you've got somebody that's on a TV playing a game on their Xbox and all that, but somebody's playing it with like PC controls and all that on a Windows 10 computer, they can be playing the exact same game at the exact same time as someone else. It's just a different form of import, or at least that's my understanding of it from what I've been hearing during the live stream and all that. So you can be playing a game on a Surface Pro 3 as the display with an Xbox One controller, all streamed from your Xbox One, which has to be running at the same time. That is, if you have like your Xbox One connected to a TV, but your parents or someone else in your family is using the TV for something else, you can stream that to like your tablet or your computer, then you just take the controller in there to where your display is. It's really turning the display from your Windows 10 to device into the TV screen. That's really what it is. And Windows 10 is also coming to the Xbox One, and it's going to be what they say is the most ideal platform for developers who write applications for Windows 10 platform will get them available on the TV as well because basically there's nothing new to write. Obviously, there's got to be some scaling stuff like you would make an iPhone application to make it suitable for the iPad. Presumably, it's going to be the same sort of thing to make an application that's designed for the Windows smartphones, for the tablets, and for the laptops and desktops and that, and also for TVs. So they're trying to create a more seamless experience across all of them and Xbox game DVR which is digital video recording captures videos of gameplay footage so as far as I can tell you can probably either save them onto your computer or you could upload them to YouTube or Twitch or something like that presumably after you've recorded them I don't think they're necessarily streaming straight from an Xbox One, but I believe they've already got Twitch doing that on there. I haven't personally got an Xbox One, that's as much as I know. But anyways, that's the whole part of the integration with the Xbox One experience. So if you do have an Xbox One and you're looking up to upgrade to Windows 10, you should be really, really happy about this. At number four, we have 
Cortana, which is a voice assistant, I believe, from the Halo series, from what I can remember. So, Cortana is basically Microsoft's version of Apple's Siri. It's designed to be useful when needed for tasks like reminders, and that's all it really needs to be. It doesn't need to be anything complex of that. It's more one of those themes, as far as I would like it, especially if Apple decided to bring Siri to the Mac, which obviously Microsoft's one step ahead of them in terms of bringing Cortana to Windows 10, is to sort of ask it to do things on the side while you're doing other productive stuff. So it might be if you're watching a YouTube video or something and you think of something that you need to be reminded about, you could say, hey Cortana, which is a function of Windows 10, because it's always listening for your command, and just say to it, remind me to blah, blah, blah. So basically that's one of the useful features of having Cortana and all that, and it's meant to le learn you as you use the operating system more and all of that, and it's also got really good integration with the third thing on this list, which is Project Spartan. So, Project Spartan is Microsoft's attempt to create a Google Chrome-like web browser. It will launch alongside the next version of Internet Explorer in Windows 10. Now, I guess you could say when I set up Windows 7 in Parallels Desktop 9 on my Mac, the first thing that I did, I'm not kidding, the first thing I did as soon as it was installed was download Google Chrome. As far as I can tell, basically what Microsoft's trying to do is to get you to get used to Internet Explorer being there all the time, but they want you to use Project Spartan, or Spartan if that ends up being the final name, we don't know it. I personally like the name. If you go ahead to want to get another download, download another browser off the internet and that, they're really saying, well, don't you, you do that, just use Spartan. And it has a new rendering engine to be compatible with how the internet is today, or at least that's what the guy in the picture who did the tech demo explained. And just by looking at it, the content dominates the screen, which is really taking cues from Google Chrome itself. The tabs are located above the address bar, like Chrome, but they're more like just regular rectangles, not like sloping sides like in Google Chrome for the actual tabs along the top. It has a drawing mode, so you can draw over the top of a web page and send it as a web page with the drawings moving up and down when you scroll through the page. So basically, in the image, that the guy who did the demo circled around the heading and drew an arrow and wrote this and that. If he then scrolled up and down that page, that writing there would also move up and down. It's not static like an image. So like if you took a screenshot of a web page and you put it in paint and you did it, by doing this and the way that they've done it, it's so you can have, you can send like its own HTML file and then sending that to others to view. So it's really, really cool. It has a tool to screenshot a part of the screen. And as far as I know, I'm sure this is compatible as well across Windows 10 as well. I don't think it's just restricted to Project Spartan. It'd be a bit weird if it was, but from what I've heard, it's that you can take a screenshot of part of the screen. So, to be honest, this has been a Mac feature that I absolutely adored as soon as I got my Mac, which you can do on the Mac in OS X, and even in OS X Mavericks and Yosemite if you're interested, by going Command-Shift-4, or Command-Shift-3 if you want to take a photo of the full screen, but Command-Shift-4 to then select a region to take a screenshot of. So basically, when Windows 10 has inherited that, but it's also inherited a lot of other features, though, in terms of relevant to the web browser, is the fact it's going to have a reader mode, like Safari on iOS and OS 10. It also has a reading list, which is like, and named, like it is on iOS and OS 10, that does support offline reading list mode, which is also from iOS and OS 10. But it also supports PDF files and all that as well. And Cortana is integrated into Project Spartan, like I was trying to say before, where appropriate, such as 
an answer to a question you might have in mind when typing in the address bar based off your recent activity, both what you do it in the web browser itself, presumably in Project Spartan or Spartan web browser or whatever it's called, and also on the computer itself based on the, your office files and other various files that you've got on your computer and all that, it sort of gets to learn you over time, which is one of the big things that the guy during the demo was trying to highlight is why Cortana is so significant over Siri, because Siri was the first, obviously, so they have to try and bring out something new and claim that it's better. So that's Project Spartan. I'm really looking forward to it. But one thing that really should have happened with Windows 8, which I'm glad to see them do, is number two on this list, which is Continuum. And I honestly didn't know this word existed until I heard it. But the whole concept of what it is, I thought, well, surely something like this already exists. But I didn't realise it. No one's really done it until now, which is the ability for the software to adapt to the forms of input currently available. Now, that's just a definition that I've come up with, but it basically sums up everything that Windows 10 is based around. So, this would make it a lot better for sales of the Surface Pro 3, because taking this example, if you're on the couch or something like that, and you're using your Surface Pro 3 or whatever just to watch videos or just browse the web casually or something like that, then if you click on the Start menu you would get the Metro UI user interface sort of thing that comes up, like it was in Windows 8, because each of those tiles are so much bigger, they're more designed for finger interaction, not so much with a cursor, which is meant to be for a fine grain point on the screen, which is why you need something like a USB mouse. So if you then put dock into the additional keyboard thing, which, why would you not have it if you had a Surface? And if you put a USB mouse as well, but mainly when you dock the keyboard in, you'd get the start menu like Windows 7. So it sort of adapts to like a desktop mode when you've got the keyboard and or the mouse plugged in, presumably just when the keyboard's plugged in. But it's more designed to be that way because if you're using a keyboard attached and all that it's thinking well you try to use this more like a computer not so much like a tablet so then when you take the keyboard out it would then say do you want to go back to tablet mode you basically tap on it and then it will just act like it was in Windows 8 in terms of click on the start menu button and you get the whole Metro user interface I honestly believe that if Windows 8 and 8.1 had this feature from the start, then Windows 8 would have been a lot more successful in terms of market share and sales. It's the fact that Windows 8 wasn't really well done, or at least from what I could tell, and from my experience of using it on my Mac and that, even on my previous Toshiba laptop, as I dual-booted that computer, is the fact that it's not really well designed for keyboard and mouse, but it was very well designed for tablet use and all that. But having that on like a 15-inch laptop anywhere up to a 30-inch external monitor for a desktop, it's just... just no. So they've basically solved this now, and they're basically saying, well, if you've got a mouse and a keyboard plugged in, we'll give you the desktop mode. If you haven't, we'll give you the tablet mode. And it also scales based on the screen size that you have. So it's really the one operating system that they're going to put on all of the Windows smartphones, on the tablets, on the desktops, and I would assume that they're going to put on the Xbox One as well, but I'm not too sure about that. It's more, I think it's going to be more down along the lines of just adding certain features across, but that's at least my understanding of Continuum. So they really should have done this from the first place. So... At number one is probably the most obvious, I'm sure you would have figured out by now, is the fact that Windows 10 is actually free with limits. Which, yes, I know that's an Apple reference and all that from Craig Federici and all that. But the operating system itself is available to everyone once released for one year for free. And when I'm saying this, I made the slides for this and then I found out later on just before I started to record this video and that was that if you've got Windows 8.1 or Windows Phone 8.1, 
you get Windows 10 for free, but if you've got Windows 7, you can upgrade to Windows 10 without having to go through Windows 8 for free up to the first year since its public release, which would be later, to, later this year when they officially say, yes, that's the official release date, not relevant to the Insider program or anything like that. So what I'm still confused about is if it's free for the first year and you have to then pay to keep using it, or if it's free for life, basically, provided that you installed it in the first year of release to try and get as many people off Windows 7 onto Windows 10 to make it life a lot easier when it comes to stopping Windows updates for Windows 7 and all that, just like they did with Windows XP, I believe it was earlier 2014, from memory. So, what are my thoughts on this? Well, I think Microsoft, despite being Windows version software, being one of their major money revenues, obviously, because that's probably one of their main sources of income, it would hurt the bank, just like Office for Mobile devices for f making that for free and that, where possible in that. But it's probably going to hurt the bank, but it is probably necessary because of all the hate and damage that they've done with Windows 8, and they need to do it to get users to upgrade from it, or Windows 7 to Windows 10, so then they could eventually, like I said before, stop supporting all of the previous versions of software with Windows updates, starting with Windows Vista, and then eventually they'll do Windows 7, then eventually 8, and then if you get everyone on the same platform, it's going to make life so much easier moving forward in terms of updates and all that. So I'm really happy that they've gone ahead and made it free, at least for the first year for Windows 7 users, and the fact that they're listening to the customer feedback, the fact that they're not charging Windows 8 users for life, to get Windows 10 and all that is basically saying we're going to give you Windows 8.2 disguised as Windows 10 as a kind gesture for trying to support us all these years ago back in late 2012 I believe Windows 8 came out so that's basically why they've gone down this route of making them free so that's it for now thank you very much for watching the question for you the audience is Will you upgrade to Windows 10 as soon as it's released to the public, and if not, why not? So you can let me know by leaving a comment below, and if you enjoyed this, please give it a like, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future, hopefully on Windows 10, and I also do videos on Apple, starting to do more on Android devices, software and all that, and also on Nintendo, and other various tech things as well, so I hope you all enjoyed enjoyed this video. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you later.